Hello, <clears throat> we're going to speak about oxygen today, oxygen therapies, and how they relate to inflammation. I happen to have written a book about the subject, and I will be coming out with a second edition in a few months. When we talk about oxygen and we talk about inflammation, it's really good to know from the very beginning that hypoxia, which is the absence of oxygen, and inflammation are two sides of the same coin. We also have to understand that low CO2, carbon dioxide conditions, under clinical conditions, and low oxygen also coincide, they go together. Oxygen therapy, there, there are many things to cover. My, my name, by the way, is Dr. Mark Circus. I live here in Brazil, this is my office. And I haven't been doing videos in a long time, but we're starting again. Oxygen, by itself, is, is elevated to, it's, it's the most prescribed medicine in hospitals, it's legally considered a medicine. It's the most prescribed medicine in the world. But it's good to know that pure oxygen will kill you. There's up and downside to oxygen. If you breathe pure oxygen gas, it'll kill you. In every tank of oxygen, there's always like 10% carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide makes oxygen safe. The key, one of the keys to doing safe oxygen therapy is to pay attention to carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide makes oxygen safe. Carbon dioxide makes oxygen deliverable to the cells. There's a chronic problem in the world, in the modern world, with carbon dioxide deficiencies in the blood because people are breathing too fast. The faster you breathe when you're sleeping, eating, watching TV, sitting in front of the computer, the more carbon dioxide you get rid of. You become deficient because you're getting rid of too much CO2. CO2 is not an evil gas. It's a nutrient, just like oxygen is. They're both nutrients. They're both interdependent. One of the reasons exercise is such a wonderful thing is we produce a lot of CO2. And by a byproduct of that is we get more oxygen delivered to the cells. We have to breathe faster because we're making all the CO2. And we have to breathe faster then because we've got to get rid of the excess. But in terms of the major vast majority of people today, when they're not exercising, most people are not exercising enough today, you're getting rid of too much. And then you become deficient in oxygen, leading to hypoxia, low oxygen conditions, which lead directly to inflammation. Sometimes it's the other way around. Inflammation leads to low oxygen. Inflammation in the capillaries blocks oxygen delivery to the cells. That kind of inflammation creates hypoxia. But breathing, and part of the talking about natural oxygen therapy, you have to start with breathing. Seventy years ago, let's talk about 1950, the medical norm for breathing was eight breaths a minute. Today, they've changed that to 12, 14, 15. The faster you breathe, the sicker you are. The faster you breathe, the sooner you die. The faster you breathe, when you're not exercising, the less oxygen your cells are getting, which causes 
inflammation. Very interesting, actually, before we get into the oxygen component of oxygen therapy, know that there are two main therapies to begin with. To base, the, like the foundation of good oxygen therapy. One is slow breathing, and the other is using baking soda, sodium bicarbonate, or potassium bicarbonate, or magnesium bicarbonate. There are three forms. Why is sodium bicarbonate the miracle medicine that it is? It gives one instant access to oxygen. Because when sodium bicarbonate hits the stomach and hits the acid, or you put a lemon, which is an acid, in the glass, it turns to CO2. You drink it, you get more CO2, which you're being deficient in because of fast breathing, it inst instantly will dilate the blood vessels and change the oxygen disassociation curve, which is basically how easily oxygen jumps on and off red blood cells. Remembering that pure oxygen will kill and that oxygen tanks contain 10% CO2, we see that oxygen therapy is made safe, made possible when you increase your CO2 levels. One of my favorite therapies <clears throat> for doing oxygen directly is called EWAT, exercise with oxygen. Of course, not everybody who's like in a hospital can exercise. People are bedridden, so it's, then it's not really appropriate. But when you're doing exercise at home on a bicycle, standing bicycle, and you fill up the big bag full of oxygen from oxygen concentrator, you get on the bike, you put a big mask on, and for 15 minutes you get your heart beating faster, breathing faster, making CO2 again because you're exercising, and then you breathe in a wall, an avalanche of oxygen. This is one of the best ways of getting oxygen naturally and safely because you're increasing, again, your CO2. It's a very powerful approach, like hyperbaric chambers are, when you get into a chamber and they increase the pressure. But that's it's very expensive, and you have to get into it and spend sometimes hours where exercise with oxygen therapy you can do in 15 minutes. Increasing CO2 and breathing in a wall of purified oxygen. Again, going back to inflammation. Inflammation is the bottom line to most diseases. Almost cancer can be defined as an inflammation. Diabetes starts out with the inflammation of the pancreas. Pain. In general, pain is an expression, is how our body feels inflammation. Of course, you have chronic inflammation and low grade chronic, and of course, you have, you know, through injury, uh, acute inflammation. To resolve inflammation, you want to do oxygen therapy, but at the same time, you want to do carbon dioxide. CO2 therapy. There are different products on the market too, things that uh, you can drink, liquefied oxygen. There's even an oxygen that combines oxygen with magnesium for real intestinal cleaning. It's a, it's a, it's a big field. What's been introduced over the last few years namely by myself as a principal actor in the field of hydrogen medicine. 
And I published a book called Hydrogen Medicine. Another favorite way that I do oxygen therapy is with hydrogen inhalation machines, where you breathe through a, a nose piece, 66% hydrogen and 33% oxygen. It's very interesting to discover that the deep sea divers who hold the record for going deep down into the ocean, like 2,000 feet, or around 700 meters, to survive at bone-breaking pressure and cold and stress, to survive there, divers b breathed 96% hydrogen and only 4% oxygen. One of the downsides of oxygen therapy, which again has its dangers in the way it's practiced today in hospitals and at home with people just breathing oxygen, is oxygen stimulates the respiration, stimulates free radicals and oxidative stress. which is, goes along with inflammation. Oxidative stress leads to inflammation. When you breathe hydrogen with oxygen, what does the hydrogen do? It's kind of a miracle substance. The whole universe runs on it. It'll stimulate metabolism like oxygen in the mitochondria, but it's like baseball. You have a pitcher and a catcher. Hydrogen is both the pitcher and the catcher. It'll stimulate metabolism, which increases oxidative stress or free radicals, which is always a product of metabolism. But just like a hydrogen car or truck or or a bus, or a train. The byproduct of hydrogen is water. And what hydrogen medicine does, which is very important in oxygen therapy, is you, you it, it acts as a pitcher, it gives energy, but at the end it catches the free radicals. It neutralizes them and turns the worst free radicals into water. So what we're introducing here, well, the real, the, the real reason to talk about oxygen therapy, and of course CO2 and the hydrogen, is to get rid of inflammation, is to have our diseases, our chronic inflammations, our chronic pain, or our cancer, we want it to retreat. We want to, bring us back to a healthier, lower inflammation condition. It's called healing. Healing is possible if you understand and know what you're doing. I want to bring up also some other very important aspects of oxygen therapy, which are the basic minerals of life are also important for oxygen. Magnesium. Magnesium controls the shape and function of red blood cells. If you're deficient in magnesium, it creates problems with oxygen transport. So you don't want to be deficient in magnesium. Iodine is very red. Red blood cells are very red. Iodine is necessary for metabolism. Iodine, having appropriate iodine levels in the body, is important for oxygen therapy. Selenium is very important for iodine, if you want to take high doses of iodine. And it also, along with sulfur, is also important in the whole process of oxygen utilization. So when you want to reduce inflammation 
and you want to use oxygen therapies, you want to employ a combination approach. Again, using CO2 on one side, hydrogen on another, and using the essential minerals of life. Of course, we already mentioned bicarbonate. To successfully reduce inflammation, which is the same is the same thing as saying reducing hypoxia. Cancer is a very you know, cancer occurs under hypoxic situations. If you deprive cells of oxygen, of enough oxygen, they will turn cancerous as a matter of survival. That's what cancer actually is. It's a survival mechanism for cells being deprived of oxygen. So they switch into another type of metabolism. So these things all come together. Oxygen is in the middle. But it, by itself, it doesn't work, or is dangerous, or it takes too much time. When you combine, miracles in medicine can happen, and they do happen. Personally, I use hydrogen with oxygen. I have a hydrogen inhalation machine. And I have an EWAT system, exercise with oxygen. And I start my day every day, every day with a combination sodium bicarbonate, potassium bicarbonate, and I take a lot of magnesium chloride every day. I'd like to hear from you. I'd like to, to, to know what disease you want to treat with or you're just interested in this intellectually. If you like this video, you can share it. Subscribe to my channel, my YouTube channel. You can share it with others. And for exclusive lessons and in-depth information, please go to my site, drcircus.com. That's D-R-S-I-R-C-U-S dot com. You can subscribe to my newsletter. You'll find links to the machines and everything I've just spoke about Everything is there. I have easily over a thousand articles on my sites. You can find by category, go to medical topics, you can see everything I've written about magnesium, cancer, iodine, everything is there.